friends, it's Kathy here again today, and I'm with somebody very special. This is Sean Gooden with Gooden Sweet Cookies. I'm so excited to meet you and hear all about these. And I just ate one, and we'll mix that into the to the thing. They're delicious. Highly recommend. All right. So tell me, tell me about your history. You have kind of an interesting history of how you got to cookies. Yes. Yeah. Well. Um, long story short, because there's not a really good way to condense it, but I'll do my best. Um, I started baking chocolate chip, baking and selling mm -hmm. chocolate chip cookies from scratch in high school. In high school, that is enterprising, young man. I figured, uh, you know, I, I, I thought that it was a good test of my, or training ground rather, for my entrepreneurial skills that I was going to later use. Yeah. Um, I didn't think it would become the business itself, right? Uh, you know, especially that it is today. Um, but I called them good and ready cookies, and I sold them for fifty cents each, and I would sell out every day. <laughs> it's a bargain, fifty cents. Fifty cents each, and I would I would definitely sell out. And, and you went to you grew up here. I did. Grew I'm a Austin. I'm a third generation East Austinite. Wow. And of course, born and raised. East Austin, Texas. Um, and unfortunately, it, well, let me phrase it this way. I, I had an older brother who passed away in 2008. His name was Anthony. His name is Anthony. And uh, he was a huge fan of my, at the time, one flavor of cookies, which was chocolate chip. And he called them world's famous. Um, and so, you know, of course, family and, and friends knew that I baked cookies, but he would always ask me to make him some world's famous. And so, um, you know, that, that's what I did. As a matter of fact, the name of the chocolate chip cookies right now is world's famous. World's famous, y'all. World's famous chocolate chip. And that, of course, is, uh, a, you know, a deep tribute to my brother, but the entire business as a tribute to my brother. So amazing that you did that, all of this for him. And you have a, a mar like a martial arts background. I do. Um, and it's, it's kind of crazy how that's all tied together, but I'm a second degree black belt in Shaolin Do Kung Fu and Tai Chi. Um, hope to be testing to third degree black belt in the next few months. Wow. Um, and so that's a lifelong pursuit. I've been training now for about 21 years. Wow. Um, and my brother was also a martial artist. And unfortunately, he passed away from a sparring accident in 2008. And, so sorry. Uh, I appreciate that, Kathy. It's, it's tough. It's really tough. Um, you know, I was, I was telling my chief operating officer yesterday, whose name is Sarah, by the way, um, it's, it's hard to be here sometimes. And I don't mean here in this space. I mean here in this place, as in doing this thing that I'm trying to do. Because every day that I come to the business, I kind of have to pretend like I'm not really here. Right. Uh, have some sort of mental and some heart separation. Exactly. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. I would be, you know, breaking down every day. Mm. Um, so... I mean, and, you know, it, there's, it's tragic, but there's also beauty in it. And the beauty is that it has propelled me to this point. And for that matter, will continue to propel me forward um, for each next step that we make. Yep. In fact, um, this morning I'm coming from delivering our third order at the airport. And it's going swimmingly there. We've been there for approximately two and a half weeks, so the yeah. order uh, frequency is increasing, and as well as the order volume. That's awesome. Just a really beautiful thing. Um, but I mean, you know, with each next step, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Absolutely. So why are they square? <laughs> this is a good question. This is a good question. So our, our tagline is all natural, square, just can't share. Just can't share. So if you get some, you got to make sure that you get some for yourself 
and then <laughs> that you can put away, and then you get some for everybody else. Because otherwise, there there could be a battle ensuing. Um, but to answer the question, you know, again, I, I started baking and selling cookies in high school, and you know, when I first decided I was going to do that. I'm doing it the normal way, you know, spooning out dough. And I used to, I'd have a um, a cup of water for the spoon to sit in, yeah, and then a cup of water to rinse it. Mm -hmm. And you know, with each one, you got to do this because otherwise, it's sticking to the spoon, right. it's getting all on the hands, it's all and messy. Fingers, it's all messy. Yeah. I was like, um, you know, I tried that a few times. I was like, I was, I'm done with that. And <laughs> efficiency, efficiency is key. Efficiency is key. So. And I was like, well, you know what? Why don't I try just spreading all of the dough onto the sheet and see what happens? And I tried it, and it's it amazing. came out perfect. Yeah. And I've been doing it ever since. And of course, if you, you know, if if the dough is covering the entire sheet, now you got to figure out a good way to get it off. And so I was like, well, let's try squares. So that's how that all came about. Efficiency. Efficiency leads the day. And your your cookies have. Kind of fun, interesting names. Obviously, world's favorite um, or world's famous. But how how do you come up with your different flavors and then the different names? So about the time um, that I decided I was going to really do this business seriously, mm -hmm. which by the way was around 2010, 2011. This is a couple of years after my brother passed away. Yeah, and I had a you know a chance to kind of mull it over and really. It was a directive. It was like, go bake. You know, I feel like Noah or something. <laughs> um, but it was like, go bake. Go bake. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go bake. I got to I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go, go bake. bake. And so I said, that was it. But about the time that I decided I was going to do it and take it seriously, first, um, I was in the quote-unquote experimental kitchen for a year. The first six months was to create the product. Yeah. Um, you know, based on the re these are all my recipes. So based on the recipes to, to make sure that I could deliver it. And then the following, and during that first six months, I mean, I tried all different kinds of uh, vanilla extract, yeah. uh, you know, different chocolates, di just different ingredients, yeah. different measurements of those ingredients, so on and so forth. So it was all this kind of, you know, baking is all science anyway, but it was all this scientific experimentation. Yeah. Moment. But then the next six months, once I figured, you know, I had gotten to a point where I'm like, okay, I can do this. I have it. Here it is. Here's my base. And then I was like, well, now let's see how many flavors I can create from the base. And so I spent the next six months doing that. But that was fun. Very fun. <laughs> I threw away a lot of cookies, <laughs> you know. Um, the Cookie Protection Society of America is still after me, <laughs> but I, I, I threw away a lot of cookies um, during that time because, of course, you can't just keep eating them. I, I mean, I'm like, wow. <laughs> I mean, challenge accepted over yes, here, you know. Right. Yeah. You know, Kathy, I will go back into, you know, uh, go experimental. Back in time. Yeah, that's right. Give production. me all those cookies. Well, I mean, you know, to tell you the truth, during that time, I came up with like 35 flavors. And yeah. I had to stop because I'm like, I'm not in the cookie flavor business. I'm in the cookie selling business. I need yeah, to produce and sell yeah. beets, right? Yeah. So I have all these flavors just kind of waiting on the, on the drawing board. But for the ones that actually made it into the rotation, um, I decided to give them all their own individual names. At the time, I was thinking um, not only would they have their own individual names, but they would have their own personalities so that they could feature by themselves on some yes. commercial in the future. You know, yes. this is how I was thinking about it. As a matter of fact, they each all had their own individual logos, each flavor. I love it. I was like, all right. In, in the <laughs> rebirth, I was like, that's too much. You got to core down. Um, so as far as the names are concerned, though, lots of them, I love music. Mm-hmm have to have music I um, I was in band from sixth grade all the way through college mm -hmm. and if I had played a different instrument I played baritone or euphonium if I had played a different instrument I probably would have been a professional musician yeah and so this is kind of a morphed artistry 
you know, it has kind of morphed into this. I mean, that's also that ties martial arts into it, too. For sure. But um, either way, I love music. And so lots of the cookie names uh, are tied to music as well. That makes sense. Yeah. That's like very cool. Like Sledgehammer. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that. Yeah. What's your favorite? Hmm. Or is it one that you don't produce? I don't know. It's it it you know it kind of changes and goes back and forth to tell you the truth. Yeah. So sledgehammer is definitely up there in that favorite rotation. And that that's, looks uh, good. I haven't tried that one yet. It's chocolate chocolate chip with macadamia nuts and cream cheese, and it's its own experience. It's its own experience. Um, here's the racy part of the show. So I had a, a customer once send me just a picture of uh now it, i don't know maybe she was trying to suggest something to me but i doubt it i don't think so anyway it was a bubble bath and there was a little uh, you know you have those like wooden um like a tray like tray that yeah. can go into the bathtub or yeah. whatever and kind of sit there and hold all your stuff and there was wine and a book and some sledgehammer cookies and I was like, okay, I, I wish I could use that, but <laughs> unfortunately I can't. But I, you know, I get the I get the understanding about how important this situation is. And it's an the experience. sledgehammer cookies, it's an experience. It's completely oh, and totally. I love experience. that. Yeah. Really, really good. And it's such a unique flavor. It's not something you can. I, I've never seen. I've it never like. seen it. Yeah, I can't. I'm gonna order some. So, uh, so right now you're in this kind of a shared kitchen space. How does it work with your neighbors? Well, you know, the beauty of this particular facility, previously with um, commercial kitchens or shared kitchen space, um, it was, you know, it would be one big kitchen. Right. In open air, kind mm. of. And then every body, every entity is coming to that one big kitchen and preparing, preparing, yeah. using it, so on and so forth. Yeah. And, you know, it, it sounds like it would be a great situation, but it turns out to be horrible because people flavors. don't have the same, well, flavors and that sort of mixing in terms of environmental, but also, you know, hygiene and cleanliness. I am, I am very, very serious about having a, I mean, in, it, as well you should be just in general, yeah. but this is a commercial kitchen. This right. is a commercial operation and the, the kitchen should be clean. It should always be clean. Always. Period. Yeah. Uh, you know, we never leave here without uh, having a clean kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, everything put away, everything uh, closed up. Yep. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. Um, which also lends a good hand to the efficiency of the operation. Yes. But not in that previous scenario. Not everybody shared the same sort of philosophy about how to handle the kitchen. So you'd have to deal with that and you also have to deal with like people stealing your stuff and all that kind of thing. This particular facility is completely different in that even though the audience can't see it right now, um, this is a siloed, yep. you know, it, it, it's literally our space alone with a door um, and, you know, while we have neighbors and they may be doing various other culinary implements um you know we don't we don't bother them they don't bother us yeah um quite often so there are i believe 45 kitchen spaces in here and there are about 30 of them that are occupied yeah it's a lot quite a bit yeah it's kind of cool it is cool really yeah um and there's some five-star food coming out of this facility it's really incredible but quite often they'll come and be like Hey, um, we don't have any desserts. Can you, what would you recommend? Oh, I have an idea for you. How <laughs> about some cookies, you know? Right. And so we'll, we'll do wholesale arrangements with them. And that nice. Kind of thing. So it, nice. it ends up working out pretty well. Yeah, that's awesome. So how do people order your cookies? That is a great question. So, and the beauty of the answer is, we ship nationwide, all from the website. So they make great gifts. You can see how they're yes. packaged. Yes. They're going to travel well. They're um, uh, hermetically vacuum sealed bags uh, that will keep everything fresh, you know, for at least as long as is possible. Uh, which in those bags is right at about two weeks. Wow! Shipping. Nice, nice. 
Um, so anyway, we ship nationwide, all from the website, which is goodandsweetcookies.com, G-O-O-D-E-N, then sweet like you know it, and cookies like you know it, dot com. And Gooden is my last name, G-O-O-D-E-N. And so, you know, there's some predestination there. Yeah, uh, I know, think so. That I became a baker. Yep. Um, but, so you can go to the website, order for delivery and shipping from the website. You can Great. come here and pick them up. Awesome. Uh, we're at 5610 North IH35 in Austin, Texas, uh, 78751, right across, directly across the highway from Capitol Plaza, yep. and not very far at all from Mueller, like, you know. Uh, it's a hot uh, skip and a uh, jump. Exactly, a stone's throw. Um, and um, we also deliver through DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, and um, an outfit called Easy Cater. Easy okay. Cater. Huh. Okay. Um, the Easy Cater one is slightly different um, in that it's set up to deliver our larger items. Yeah, that makes sense. Like a big bulk. A big bulk item, out, you know, obviously from Cater, cater yeah. right? So we have a, a product called the Party Pack. Yes. And it has 50, 5 zero, 50 individually, <laughs> exactly, individually wrapped and sealed cookies of I mean, four different flavors. It's just a good weekend. It's a great weekend. And it comes all in one box. It's very portable. Um, and again, because they're each individually wrapped and sealed, it's very hygienic. Uh, you know, you're dealing with, you know, we're dealing with COVID still. Um, and just the air of COVID, even when, when sort of the activity go of it goes away, a lot of the implements because of it, I believe will stay. I think so too. A lot, of, a the lot of the practices we've done. The practices yeah. That we, yeah. Just, you know, just from a, um, for lack of a better word, a hygiene standpoint. Yeah. Um, but just, you know, just for health and safety, for sure, you know, it's very portable. You can just pick them up and go. That's awesome. But Easy Cater delivers those through Easy Dispatch. Got it. And you can get to that from our website as well. I love it. Wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? Um, I'd like to share that this is absolutely a labor of love. And I appreciate all your support yes and i appreciate you so much for i know i'm so happy to meet you and to hear your story i really appreciate you sharing it with me thank you yeah all right thanks thanks for joining us friends have a good and sweet day <laughs> i love that Try this. Oh. Oh, that's good. Mm. More for later. I may or may not share. I would.